Hi, I'm Sharon Bill. Welcome to my Theory Tuition series where we're working step by step through the ABRSM Theory Grades. There are lots of resources available to help you on my website. If you visit SharonBill.com, you'll find some free PDF information sheets that you can download in US Letter or A4 and they accompany each step of this series. There's also a page with links to all of my YouTube video tutorials and you can access information about the books that I have available. I've written an exam technique guidebook, how to take your ABRSM music theory exam. It's full of tips and techniques on how to best prepare for your exam and also how to best make use of the time when you're actually in the exam room working through your exam paper. So if you visit SharonBill.com, you'll find it's all there. If you can give me a like, that'd be great, and subscribe to my channel to keep updated. There's lots more in store. And now we're going to continue with the Grade 3 2017 Paper A, and we're going to look at the last few questions on that paper. So if you turn with me to page 5, we're going to be looking at question 7. So I always recommend that you have a go of this yourself, first of all. So just press pause, have a go, or just listen to the first part and then press of my explanation, then press pause, uh, and then you can always re-access into the video to check your answers through. But have a go yourself. It's always better to learn by your mistakes. And you're always writing in pencil, even on exam day. Nice sharp pencil. Um, and then if you make a mistake, you can just rub it out and have another go. So I'm hoping you've had a go with this and now we'll work through this together. Question 7 asks us to re rewrite this melody using notes of twice the value and we need to put in a new time signature at the place, well obviously at the beginning, and then we need to regroup the notes, rebeam them as necessary. So we're going to have to go twice the value, so at the moment we're in 3 eighth notes, 3 quaver beats per bar. The top number never changes, so we still want it to be in triple time, three bits per bar, but to make the notes twice the value, we're going from quavers, eighth notes, to crotchets, quarter notes, so the new time signature will be three over four. And then basically we're just going to double everything. So here, a semi-quaver will become a quaver, or an eighth note. These demi semis these 30 second notes will become semi quavers and then these quavers here to double those will just become crotchets so i'm just going to color in the note heads first of all because all of these are going to need note heads that are colored in i'm keeping it aligned with what they've given me just so i don't get lost so i can keep track where i'm at and also so I don't run out of room. So we're now counting in crotchet beats or quarter notes and we have to beam accordingly to show each group. So half a beat and two quarters of a beat give us a whole beat so they need to be beamed together. We're beaming in quarter notes or crotchet beat groups and following all of the rules that apply there. And then of course these are now crotchet beats, a quarter note, so they don't need beaming at all now. So that's that bar complete. Now to double this one, we've gone from a crotchet or a quarter note to a minim, a half note. And then this one will just lose the tail as that goes from a quaver, an eighth note, to a crotchet, a quarter note. So we just need to pop the stems on those, but nothing else. So this at the moment is a dotted crotchet, dotted quarter note, so that will become a dotted minim, which we will tie to this one here. So let's look at what we're going to be doing here. This is a quaver at the moment, an eighth note, so that becomes a crotchet with a dot. That's a quarter note with a dot. So here we've got three beams, so we just change that to two beams, so they become semiquavers, 16th notes. Again, we've got two beams, and then here, this semiquaver, this 16th note becomes a quaver, an eighth note. So we just need to bear in mind what we're going to be doing when we're 
beaming these together so let's look at this first one so this becomes a dotted crotchet a dotted quarter note so let's just pop the stems on those so now that's worth one and a half beats in our new time signature so we need to complete the final half a beat so these won't be beamed together with those because those two semiquavers, that remaining half a beat belongs to the last part of this beat here so we couldn't beam all of those four together because they belong to two separate beats so here we'll beam those as usual they belong to this half so there's one beat there's our next beat and now these will all make the next beat so we can beam those together so just get the note heads in need a ruler for that bit I can do it quite neatly without a ruler that way but I can't go that way however by all means use a ruler every time just to be sure and then here this last bar is a dotted minim or a dotted half note there we go that completes that question it's really important that you just take care here with this beaming let's move on to the next question question eight asks us to tick the box for each term so these are our Italian terms and performance directions and bear in mind this is all of grade one all of grade two and now all of grade three so we've accumulated quite a lot of Italian terms and performance directions don't be misled by the fact that it's multiple choice that's no um, excuse for not revising it really if anything it can confuse us rather than help us because there are some red herrings there that could just throw us off scent and so there's no alternative but just to revise these I suggest that you group all of the terms that are sort of thematically linked from each grade so all of grade one two and three words and terms and signs that might mean slow or uh, fast or loud or quiet and colour code them whatever it takes to help and so have a go at these just test yourself and then re-access into the video and I'll check through these with you so they've already given this first one prima volta means first time um, that's sort of not too difficult to remember. Prima, like the prima ballerina, is your first ballerina. So now presto means fast. So I, I always imagine some Italian ordering the coffee quickly there. Presto, presto. Whatever it takes, as bizarre as you need it to be, just to help you to remember them. There we go, ritmico, rhythmically. That's not too far stretching the imagination to see the length there. Non troppo, we've got two words here. Non is not, and troppo is too much, so we need that. Both words. Semplice is uh, simple or plain, and rubato is where we can just pull the timing around, so it's with some freedom of time, it's not metronomically um, strict. So that's that one completed. So we'll turn the page and we'll have a look at the last question nine. So let's have a look at question nine. Got a nice little hide and melody here. And all of the questions are going to be relating to this little extract. So we're going to have to keep shuffling up and down the page to keep referring to that little bit of music. The melody is in the key of B minor. Name the degree of the scale of the first note of the melody. So we can either just count up from a B or you could write out the scale of B minor. Just give yourself the letters. So we've got B, C, D, E, F, G, A. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I know there's key signatures and accidentals, but this will do the job. So here we've got an F. An F is one, two, three, four, five, the fifth. So you could work it out that way. Or you could find a B. There's a B below middle C. One, two, three, four, five. Whatever you need to just get that accurately named. 
Which other key has the same key signature as B minor? Well, D major and B minor are related keys. They both share the same key signature. You just need to learn those pairs of keys. Or you can count and work them out, counting up in fifths. If you look at the circle of fifths, there's a video I've done explaining that. You'll find that in the description below. You can just write out your key signatures first so that you're sure every time. So now, this next one. Answer true or false to this statement. Every complete bar in this melody contains at least one note of the tonic triad of B minor. So B minor, the triad, is the first, the third and the fifth. So we need to make sure that there's a B, a D and an F in every bar. So let's just see. We've got an F here, so yes. A B, yes, and a D, yep. Yeah. D, F, yes, there's a D, so yep. Yeah. However, here, there's a C, A, G, so no. So straight away, we can't say that every single bar has a note of the tonic triad because bar four doesn't, so false. Even if every one after that does, the statement is still false. Complete this statement. Bar 5 has the same notes and rhythm as bar something or other. So just a quick glance. So there's bar 5. And we can see at a glance it's the same as bar 7. Give the time name of the longest note of the melody. None of them are very long. So we've got lots of quavers, lots of eighth notes, lots of semi-quavers. However, the longest, remember a dot after a note makes it long, half as long again, so it's a dotted quaver or a dotted eighth note. Dotted quaver, or if you use the terminology, you could say dotted eighth note. There we go. So now the last part of this question, um, using the blank stave, write out the melody from the beginning of the music. Just be careful you refer to the correct bit, to the first note of bar four, but we've got to go an octave lower and change to the bass clef. To the first note of bar four, so we're going from here to here, so that's as far as we need to go. And so first of all I'm just going to map out my bar lines just get all the nuts and bolts in place and do everything that doesn't require too much thinking just while I gear up to addressing the question so we're in the bass clef now the important thing here is to always relate to middle C so just remove a bit of scribble there so there's middle C at the moment that's the C, D, E, F above middle C and so to go an octave lower we need the F below middle C and so here's middle C and so the F below middle C, C, B, A, G, F will be there. That's our starting point and if we keep that and middle C is a reference point so I'm just going to get the note heads in and worry about everything else afterwards. So there's F, F, now up to the B, one, three, four, one, three, four, there. There's the C, now that's our another checkpoint, another checkpoint, middle C, is an octave lower than that C, so that's our reference point. Upper step takes us to the D next door to that. Same note. Rest, might as well pop that in. And then upper one, two, third. So we're going to need another ledge line. Drop down one, three, four. That should take us back to the middle C here, which it does. So we know we've not gone wrong. Up a step. I could put the dot there. I could put the dot there while I'm at it. Back down a step. Middle C again. 
to finish. That's all that we require to do. So now I've just got to put the stems in. Beam those. Stems are all going upwards because we're above that middle line for sure. And this shows why we would change the cloth because if it keeps going higher and higher, it's going to get really um, a silly amount of ledger lines, and so that's why you'd convert to treble cloth. So that's all the thinking done. However, I'm just going to make sure I earn all of those points just by adding the articulation marks. Let's just go the extra mile. M, F, presto. There we go. And that's that question complete. And that's that paper complete. I do hope that you're finding this helpful. I hope that... Um, it's helping you become confident with your theory. I hope that you're also enjoying it. I'm certainly enjoying working through it with you. If you can give me a like, that'd be really great. And please do subscribe to my channel to keep updated. There's lots more in store. Do also visit SharonBill.com and make use of all of the information that's available there to help you. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.